Today we're going to be learning a little bit about linear equations and finding the intercepts, the x and y intercepts. The main idea here for linear equations or the equation of a straight line is that a line is a series of small of points. All right, if we put these points closer and closer together and join them, you would notice that that's a line. Each of these points, if you put it on a plane, has a value, right? They have an x or a y coordinate. Okay, like this would be negative 2 and 10, about 0, 8. Again, they're not exactly perfect, but you can see the point here, that each point is going to have an x and a y value. That's what we're going to be looking at when we're look at, looking at a line. So when you have a line, and you're looking for the intercepts, you're going to look for the point value, or the x and the y coordinate that corresponds with the point where that line actually crosses over the x-axis, which is this guy, or the y-axis, and that's that one. So here are two major points that we want to find when we have a line. We want to find the point where it crosses, like I said, the x-axis and the y-axis. And these are called the intercepts, or the x and the y intercept. In this case, we can look at the graph and we can go, oh, well, it crosses the y-axis right about there. So we go 0 on the x-axis and we go up 1, 2, 3. 0, 3 is the point where it crosses the y-axis. So the y-intercept, 0, 3. And the x-intercept is 1, 2, 3. And it doesn't go up and down at all, so it's 3, 0. Well, that's pretty easy when we've got a graph. But what, how do we find these points when we don't have a graph? That's what we're going to look at today. So the, the first part that we need to look at here when we're going to be finding them without a graph is that we need to notice something. For all y-intercept values, for every single time it crosses the y-intercept, the x value will be 0. Okay? If we move along the x-axis, then it's not crossing the y. You see? So for all y-intercept values, the x is equal to 0. And we see that here, where it crosses the y-axis, the y-intercept, the value is 0, 3. Okay, so for every single time, every time it crosses the y-axis, the x value will be 0. And every single time it crosses the x-axis, the y value will be equal to 0. You see that right here. This is the point 3, 0. It crosses the x-axis, so the y value is equal to 0. All right, so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use that information to help us find these points where they actually cross the axis. So we have this equation, x plus y is equal to 3. If we're going to find the y-intercept, we need to make x equal to 0. So let's take this equation, and we're going to plug in 0 for the value of x. And look what happens. 0 plus y is equal to 3. In other words, y is equal to 3. So our point, if x is 0, and y is 3, our point is 0, 3. Let's find the x-intercept. For the x-intercept, we're going to make y equal to 0. So to do that, we get our original equation, and we plug the value of 0 in for y. x plus 0 equals 3. Well, if x plus 0 equals 3, then x is equal to 3 x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0. We've just found our point 0, 3, and 3, 0, mathematically, instead of using the graph that we had. Let's look at another question, a little bit more complicated this time. We have the equation 2x plus 3y is equal to 18. That's our equation. If we want to find the y-intercept, we need to make x equal 0. So everywhere we see an x, we're going to plug in a 0. 2 times 0 is 0, so the 2 essentially removes itself. And then we divide both sides of this equation by 3 and find that y is equal to 6. So when 
x is equal to 0, y is equal to 6. That is our y-intercept. All right. To find the x-intercept, we make y equal to 0. So we're going to plug 0 into this equation. And that's just from the original equation we have. 2 times x, 3 times 0. 3 times 0 removes itself, right? It is equal to 0. So now we need to find the value for x. We divide both sides by 2 using the property of equality. And we have x is equal to 9 x is equal to 9 when y is equal to 0. That is our x-intercept point. All right. I'm going to do one more example. And this type of question, it really requires some practice. So doing it over and over and over, you'll start to see patterns, and you'll start to, to get quicker at it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and solve this one again a third time here, a different equation. 4x minus 3y equals 24. We're going to find the y-intercept. To do that, we need to make x equal to 0. 4 times x, or 4 times 0, is equal to 0. So essentially, we're looking for negative 3 is equal to 24. We divide both sides by negative 3, and we find that y is equal to negative 8. So our y-intercept point is 0, negative 8. For finding our x-intercept, we make y equals 0. Plug that 0 into the equation. 3 times 0 is 0. 4x minus 0 is the same as saying 4x. So now we solve for 4x. We'll divide both sides of the equation by, f by 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 4x divided by 4 will just give us x. So using the property of equality again, we found that x is equal to 6 when y is equal to 0. So that's going to be a point on this line. Specifically, it's going to be the x-intercept point. So that's the way that you find x and y-intercepts. If you're looking for the y-intercept, make x equal 0 and solve for the y-value. If you want to find the x-intercept, make y equal to 0 and solve for the x-intercept. I hope that this has been a helpful mini lesson for you. Um, I know I talk kind of fast, so you can go back through it and pause it and watch it again. And make sure to do practice questions to kind of practice on doing this type of thing, because it does take practice. And remembering that if you're looking for x-intercept, you make y equal to 0. And if you're looking for the y-intercept, you make x equal 0. Good luck. Have a wonderful day, and make sure to ask your teacher if you've got any questions.